All right, so this is section 3.3, quadratic functions and their properties. Um, here are some examples of quadratic functions. Please note that your highest degree exponent is 2, and it um, decreases in integers from there. Um, the, it usually takes, a quadratic function usually takes on the form of ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c are real numbers and a is not zero. Our domain for a quadratic is all real numbers, so there's nothing that restricts our input. Suppose that ti collects the data shown in table one, which relate the number of calculators sold at the price p in dollars per calculator. Since the price of a product determines the quantity that will be purchased, we treat price as the independent variable, so price is independent, and the number of calculators sold is a dependent <coughs> variable. Relationship between the number x of calculators sold and the price p per calculator may be approximated by the linear equation. Then the revenue r, this is what we care about, is derived from selling x calculators at the price per calculator is equal to the unit selling price p of the product times the number x number of units actually sold so it looks like this r equals x times p so we know x is 2100 minus 150p times p when we distribute that gives us our quadratic if we graph this, it's a nice quadratic function. A second situation that's quadratic involves motion of a projectile. Thanks to gravity, all of our projectile motions are usually quadratics. Based on Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration, F equals MA. It can be shown that ignoring air resistance, the path of a projectile propelled upward at an inclination to the horizontal is the graph of a quadratic function. Later in this section, we'll analyze the path. All right, so gen, here's the parent function, is this blue function. And we talked last chapter about how to transform things. So when we ch change this a value for any number greater than one, it makes our, it stretches our quadratic. When it's less than one, but greater than zero, it makes it flatter or compresses it. If I have a negative number, because negative attitude gives us a frown. It makes our quadratic a nice frowny face. The axis of symmetry is located at the vertex. If we're a happy face, the vertex is the minimum. If we're a frowny face, the vertex is the maximum. All right, so we're going to graph this quadratic function using a transformation. We're going to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So the first thing we're going to do is factor out the 2. So we're going to group 2x squared plus 8x together. We're going to put the plus 5 out. And then we're going to complete the square. So here, because I'm multiplying it all by 2, I would multiply it by 4. So if I'm, I'm actually essentially adding 4 here, but multiplying it by 2. So to keep this an equivalent statement, I would have to subtract 2 times 4 from my function. So we completed the square. 
with that said, I have 2 times x plus 2 squared minus 3. So here's my nice parent function. I'm going to have a vertical stretch of 2. So instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going to go over 1, up 2. Instead of going over 2, up 4, I'm going to go over 2, up 8. So it's going to double everything. The minus 3 means I'm going to move it down 3 units. And the plus 2 means I'm going to move it left two units. <coughs> so there's the moving it left two units and here's shifting it down three units. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative two. So if I look at the generic form of a quadratic and I factor out an A and then I want to take my, uh, my B value, I factored out the A so it's B over A, I'm going to square it and um, I divide by 4A squared because I'm taking this value, I'm squaring it, and I'm dividing by 2. So the square means I'm dividing by 4. So we solve that out, solve that out, and essentially we get that our k value, you now our h value is b over 2a. negative and our k value, so our y coordinate of our vertex is 4ac minus b squared over 4a. If I know h and k, I can convert it to vertex form. So keep these equations handy and they'll allow you to switch from standard, from, um, standard form to vertex form. So here we go. Our vertex is at negative b over 2a, where a is the coefficient of the x squared, b is the coefficient of the x term. And our axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So we're going to use the equations. We're going to plug in negative 3 for b, 2 for a and we find that our x-coordinate for our vertex is 3 fourths. We're going to plug 3 fourths into our function to find that our y-coordinate of our vertex is 7 eighths. So then our um, axis of symmetry has to be x equals 3 fourths. And because our A value is positive, our parabola opens up. And even graph it. Graph a quadratic function using its vertex, axis, and intercepts. Okay, so we're going to use the discriminant, which is the part underneath the square root in our quadratic equation, to determine whether we have one x-intercept two x-intercepts or no x-intercepts. So think about it like this. If my discriminant b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, I have two solutions. If it's equal to zero, I have one solution. And if it's less than zero, so if it's a negative, I have no solutions. All right, so let's recap. So if I have two solutions, my parabola crosses twice. If I have one solution, it taps the x-axis. And if I have no solution, then it is above or completely below the x-axis. All right, so we're going to find the intercepts of this graph. So we got our vertex, which we found. 
our axis of symmetry. So we know it's either it's going to open up because we have a positive 2. We're going to plug in 0. And we know that the y-intercept is at 0, 2. So that point right there. And by symmetry, the point with the same y value, but three-fourths to the right of the axis of symmetry. So three-fourths plus three-fourths is three-halves. So I go over three-fourths and up to right there. So now I can see, start seeing my shape, shape up, my parabola. Determine the domain and range. Well, I have all real numbers for domain, and then the range goes from 7 eighths to infinity, because it goes to up on both sides. The function is decreasing from negative infinity to 3 fourths, and increasing from 3 fourths to infinity. How fun was that? Okay. So we're going to graph this function, not using a graphing utility, but just our widths. And we're going to determine whether the graph opens up, down. We're going to find its vertex, axis of symmetry, and x and y intercepts. So we find our h coordinate of our vertex. We plug in 4 for b and 2 for a. So 4 over 2 times 2 and a negative gives us negative 1. We plug that into our function to find that its y-coordinate is negative 3. So my vertex is at negative 1, negative 3. My axis of symmetry has to be at x equals negative 1. We are positive, so we're going to be opening up. And instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going to go over 1, up 2, over 2, up 8. The y-intercept is at negative 1. And I'm going to have a matching coordinate on the left-hand side because it's a parabola. So when x is equal to 0, that's these coordinates right here. We can use the quadratic formula to find those exact values. That's negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a. Simplify, 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 and you get the two x coordinates are negative 2 plus or minus root 6 all divided by 2, and that's approximately 2.2 and negative 2.2. Domain and range. Domain is all real numbers. The range is from negative 3 to infinity. It's a decreasing from negative infinity to 1, sorry, negative 1, and from negative 1 to infinity, it's increasing. All right, let's see that one more time. We got a little bit different value going on here. We're going to plug in, using this formula, negative b over 2 times a. So we have negative negative 2 over 2 times negative 1 half. Simplify that down, you get negative 2. Plug in negative 2 into your function, and you get the y-coordinate is at 0. Our vertex is negative 2, 0. Mm. And I know we're opening. Our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2, and we are opening down. So we plug in 0 for x and find that our y-intercept is 0, negative 2. And by symmetry, so this is over 2, down 2, we go over 2, down 2 here. And we have its matching point on the other side. And we put in our nice parabola facing down. Domain is all real numbers. 
the range is from negative infinity to zero. It's increasing from negative infinity to negative two and decreasing from negative two to infinity. Okay. If we're given the vertex as one additional point, we can plug it in and solve to find our quadratic function. Let's see how that works. The vertex is at negative 2, 3, and the y-intercept is 1. So I put in negative 2 for my h, and I put in 3 for my k. The y-intercept is at 1, so when y is equal to 1, x is equal to 0. So if I take this equation back, and I know that I have plus 2 and plus 3, I can solve for a. Simplify that down, and we get a is equal to negative one half. So I take that and put my function back together. f of x is equal to negative one half x plus two squared. So given those pieces of information, it looks like this. All right, finding the max or min of a value of a quadratic. Determine whether the quadratic function has a max or min value, then find it. It opens downward, so it has a maximum. It's going to be, we find our x coordinate. The maximum value is at 9, because so we plug in our vertex coordinate. All right, here's a nice little summary. Please feel free to take a screenshot and print this out. 